Welcome to the Bears Coaches Show with Head Coach Matt Nagy, brought to you by Whipley CPAs and Consultants. Jeff Joniak with you until 8 o'clock here on News Radio 105.9 WVBM. Coach Nagy here until the bottom of the hour. And then we turn it over to the defensive coordinator, Sean Desai. Uh, we're recapping what uh, Matt, some of the uh, newspapers referred to, and I, I love it, kind of wish I thought of it, uh, as uh, a St. Nick's Day After Christmas Miracle. <laughs> It's a good play on words, although it was definitely a team win. But uh, Nick deserves a lot of credit for those two scoring drives and uh, the offense in general. Yeah, he did a great job, Jeff, you know, stepping in on short notice like that and just kind of preparing all week long. And, you know, those elements aren't easy. And that's a, that's a good football team that we played, albeit their record. They're, that's a tough environment. And, and to, for those guys to keep on fighting like they did and for him to make plays in the end, it was great. Yeah, the snow probably helped a little bit, kept the crowd down because uh, that place obviously is one of the loudest in the NFL. They still made some noise, but did you feel it was egregious in any way? I mean, did it get uh, super loud down there? I couldn't yeah, tell. There, was time, there was times it got loud for sure. You know, now I've been there before where, like you're saying, there's no snow and that, that place can rock. So, I mean, it can get super loud and you got to make sure your cadences are, or your silent cadence is good. Um, but early on in the game, there weren't as many – filled seats because I think people were getting in. So that, that definitely helped out probably both sides and it was snowy, but then it kind of settled down a little bit and you could, you could hear the crowd really taking notice. Did uh, the snow add a different uh, flavor to the game a little bit? Because as kids, we all, we all wanted to play in the snow. I mean, we, no matter how cold it was, it was fun to play in a snowstorm. Uh, it wasn't quite a snowstorm. It was a little flurrying going on, but some of those guys, I know, like talking to Khalil Herbert after he never played in snow, that was his first experience. So I'm sure you got some of that. Yeah, it, it's always interesting. And, you know, um, it's just when you get a snow game like that, it just creates a little bit of that ambiance to the game. And it, it feels like, you know, it feels like uh, football weather. And so the guys, and now there's a little difference too with the footing, you know, and sometimes yep. I think it's advantage offense because they know where they're cutting and they know which way they're going. So, uh, it's definitely unique that way, but it, it was fun to be a part of. I haven't been a part of too many of those where it's, where the field is covered like that, but I'm sure the guys loved it. Yeah, only the third time in uh, Seattle history, a, a snow game there. So, But let's uh, let's talk down the, the 24-14 and, and Nick uh, is guiding the offense, a couple scoring drives, the, the, the pass to Jimmy, obviously, and then the two-point conversion to Demir with 101 to go. Um, I don't, I'm sure you haven't had time to see it, but there are some great pictures of bird that that will be one of the pictures of the year that tell a story because it's the one hand it's two seahawks maybe three uh and it's it's just unique it's a it's one heck of a catch and one heck of a trust throw there yeah it is i mean that was a you know, to be contested like that to when you when you see it i actually thought for a second there that they were going to shove them out of bounds but so yeah. for him to keep that balance to catch the football to get the, the feet in bounds and then to maintain it uh, with, with the one handed grab and just kind of holding it there like everybody to show, hey, I got it. I caught it. And then they tried to knock it out of his hand. But it was two, and it was a special catch by Jimmy, too, the play before. Uh, are you happy for those two guys, including not, not just Nick, but, you know, Jimmy, you know, he'd like to get every red zone throw, you know, because he, he's pretty confident he's going to get it. And Demir has come on strong here of late. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy for those guys. You know, it's, Demir has done a great job this entire season of just doing what we ask. And, um, you know, he can do a lot of different things within the offense. So for him to be able to get some recognition and be able to be a big part of making some plays, even in Green Bay on that long touchdown catch he had, uh, it's neat to see. He deserves it. He does things the right way. So I'm happy for him there. And then Jimmy, uh, you know, what a, what a great way to be able to uh, help your team win a game. That's what he does. I think everybody knew that we were going to have a chance to throw him the ball. He just got to make the catch, and he did it. Well, what's the key for a, a vet starting for the first time in over 400 days? Well, a guy like Nick, um, when you play quarterback, the biggest thing mentally is pre preparing through the week, kind of going through uh, your progressions of where you're at. And then once you get to game day, well, you had some elements, you had some weather, you got to get through that part. And then it's just kind of like once you get through that first series, I think it all just kind of comes right back to you. So he showed that. He did that. We got going a little bit. I was really happy with how we were on third down. We had some third and longs. But to be 50%, 7 of 14 on third down with some of the longer distances we had, 
the, the guys, the guys uh, worked on time and they made plays. I think nine different guys touched the ball and all of them had a double digit play, at least one. So you were getting some chunks against these guys, uh, but the no turnover thing, that was huge. Yeah, that's big. I think that's really big is to make sure you protect and respect that football. Uh, we talked about it uh, this morning in regards to the yards after catch, you know, and yards after contact. It was really good. We felt guys getting vertical, uh, getting extra yards, and that's important. How ready was Ryan Willis in just in case? You know, we talked about that on Friday before the game. Yeah, excuse me. He, he was ready. Uh, we had a limited menu of what we were going <laughs> to have to use uh, with him. And we had some other stuff going. So, I mean, but I give him a lot of credit. I give Coach Snyder, Mike Snyder, our uh, assistant quarterback coach, I give him a lot of credit. They spent a lot of hours together on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday prepping. So you never know, right? The shoelace can get untied and you're up. Yep. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think of that. That that's uh well that's pretty much uh what Tevin Jenkins dealt with in Green Bay right just uh right. his reaction was oh wow uh, here we go so uh, Tevin left with a shoulder injury uh, we'll, we'll learn more across the week but you got to see Larry Borum then at left tackle how, how did he perform after you watched the tape yeah that's never easy again uh, going from one side to the other but I, I thought he did a good job there's a couple plays here or there where he opened his hips a little bit and they got some pressure but again like he battles and he cares and, and I, I really believe that uh, that he. He did just fine, and uh, he's a good kid. You know, you talked about uh, in your post-game press conference, uh, the empty the cup. I kind of liked uh, what I heard there just from what I read. I did not see the news conference, but um, just to update those who didn't know about it, uh, it was a message really from your son, Tate, freshman at Lake Forest. Yeah, it was. You know, we we, we uh, had lost that game against the Vikings when we were driving home. and You know, I don't get a whole lot of too many special moments with my kids, you know, staying pretty busy. and. He just had a nice little message for me. And then the big, big part of the message was, listen, we, we have no regrets in life. Like whatever we do, right. Him as a player in sports, um, and me as a coach and referencing me, just giving it everything you got. And it's a story that he heard from one of his coaches and it made a lot of sense to me. You know, it's, it's all of us, no matter how much talent you have or I have, if we just empty the cup and give it our all on that day, we'll have a pretty good chance to win the football game. And that was the message to the guys on Saturday night. And, I love the fact that they were listening and I love the fact that they did it on, on, uh, on Sunday. And that, that's what, you know, we fight and we emptied our cups and we got the victory. Snap throw going to Graham in the end zone. He's got it for the touchdown. Touchdown bears. Post up touchdown. Jimmy Graham with a slam dunk in the end zone. Foles gun lifts his right leg, moves to his right. Jacking it, throw it back in the end zone. Catch made. They're going to say it's good for the two-pointer. Demir Bird back of the end zone. It is good. And the Bears have the lead. 25-24 here in Seattle. Welcome back to the Bears Coaches Show. Brought to you by Whipley CPAs and Consultants. A proud partner of the Chicago Bears. Learn more at whipley.com. Jeff Joniak with Matt Nagy here on the Bears Coaches Show. We just heard the touchdown and the two-point conversion. We talked about it in our first segment, but... Uh, a former University of Miami basketball player knows how to box out. You know, that was the bulk of his athletic career in college, just one year of college football. And 12 years later, he's still making those plays in the end zone uh, and, and taking advantage of a mismatch and the relationship of Nick, locker mates in the locker room, two veterans. They've been around the block. They've been uh, through a lot of different things in their career. Uh, to have a guy still be doing the same type of things that he started his career doing has got to be pretty impressive to you, too. It is. And I've always had so much respect for Jimmy throughout all the years that he's played um, and just the way he's he's done things. And for, you know, he's one of these guys now he'll tell you I'm, I'm the best guy in the red zone to catch that fade ball, you know, in the yeah. NFL history. And, and he's right. He's right. Would you disagree with him? <laughs> you can't. And so uh, when you you know, they call it a 50 50 football, you know, when that ball's thrown and we know when, when the ball's thrown to Jimmy, that percentage is a lot higher. So. You know, give credit to Nick for giving him a chance. Uh, it's hard on that DB. It's hard on the safety because you spread them out. And then Jimmy, Jimmy's got to make the play, and he consistently does that. 70th uh, red zone touchdown in his career. Let, let's talk about the other tight end because Cole Komet had a, had a very nice game here as well. He did. And I, I really liked, you know, the, his attitude, his, his, the, the way he caught that football right from the very start. The very first catch of the game for him to catch the football uh, wasn't easy. He got hit hard, got out of bounds, got a six yard gain, you know, four or five, six yard gain. And 
um, you saw it the rest of the way. Uh, he, he really played physical football in that snow. That's who he is. That's what he is. I really think he's growing. I'm, I'm proud of the progress he's making as a tight end in different areas of the game. <clears throat> and yesterday he made some big plays. We talked about it in post game as well. It balanced out the offense with the run game. David Montgomery with 28 touches, but the underrated aspect of his hands in the passing game was a big benefit to you. Yeah, and he's always had that. Um, what I thought was neat yesterday with David was this was a defense that wanted to just really at any sign of play action, they were just going to fly out of there and try to take away all the explosives. Well, when you do that, you leave up, you, you give up the the, um, the the first zone there, you know. So they're getting they're vacating that first zone. You dump it down to the back, and now all of a sudden he can make a guy miss and make a four yard catch go into a fourteen yard gain, and, and he did that yesterday. Uh, can you break down the Khalil Herbert 20-yard touchdown, how that all opened up? Yeah, we had an RPO there, so a run-pass option. And, um, you know, depending on how they play, it was second and eight, and they decided to play a cover two shell, and uh, their linebackers were back pretty deep. So I thought the line did a great job of blocking their guys. Nick made a good read, and then Khalil made a great decision where he just stuck his left foot in the ground and got a good block by Cody White here, and the rest was history. The safety had one little chance to come up and make a play, and, Khalil made a miss and just kind of took it into the end zone. What stood out defensively to you? Well, I thought I thought defensively that, um, you know, the two possessions towards the end of the game where a field goal puts them up two scores, to get that sack, to get them out of field goal range, and then the, the, the next possession that followed that, it just showed to who our guys are that, you know, it would have been really easy for them to give up a 10 or 15, 20-yard gain and give them a pooch field goal to go up. Uh, 10 and two scores but that didn't happen and they gave us a shot they had some sudden changes where we got three and outs um, so I, I just really like where they're at right now we got some young guys stepping up we got some guys that are playing hard I'll be asking uh, Sean to decide this later but do you venture to guess how many sacks Robert Quinn would have or Khalil Mack would have because of Robert Quinn and vice versa if they were all healthy together for the whole year. Yeah, that it'd be interesting to see for sure. You know, I was I was talking about that last night with one of the coaches is it's it's really impressive to see what he's done um and to think about what could be done if if 52 is on the other side. So, I think it just speaks even more to who Robert is and the rest of these guys too. Like let's not take away from these other guys. They're they're obviously causing disruption to where teams can't double and triple team Robert every play. And, and when Robert has an opportunity to make a play, he does it. Um, it it's interesting to talk about uh, the uh, aspect of coaching in a season that has not gone the way you wanted, but you can't ever take the coach out of a football man. So sure. you're, you, you know what I mean? So yeah. it, it's kind of interesting how things are sometimes framed because uh, uh, it just – in my experience, it co no matter what, coaches are going to coach. They're going to coach to win. We're all in this profession for a reason. We've all worked hard to get to this point. We're all competitors. Um, and when you're in these moments, you got people that look to you to lead. And there's there's no other choice. Um, it is what it is. And the record is what it is as well. So it's our job to go out there and to fight every single play, um, to show that fire, to show that commitment to this organization no matter what the record you saw that even with Seattle, you know, they are in a similar situation and they have the same mentality and they came out swinging yesterday and it was a good game to watch. If you were a fan, download the Chicago bears app to play our new predictor game. Risk it brought to you by bet rivers for your chance to win $250 in free bets and a custom bears Jersey with bears head coach, Matt Nagy, our final segment here on the bears coaches show after a impressive win in Seattle on the road, 25, 24. Uh, here's a little nugget for you as well. Our stat man, Doug Coletti did the research uh, it's the first time in Bears history that score is a final, 25-24. Hmm. Bears have never won a game. It doesn't matter in the big picture, but it's a good nugget and only the 15th time in NFL history. It's an odd score, believe it or not. Yeah, it is. I never knew that, so it's interesting. Um, right. But we're on the 25 side, not the 24 side. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and you, I think you told uh, the folks this morning uh, in your news conference that no matter what, that was that was your plan to go for two. Yeah, it was. We, we, you know, we actually were talking on the sideline um, right, right as that drive started. I, I knew um, if I got an opportunity to talk to Mooney or Demir, I wanted to talk to them about the two point play just so they <laughs> it wasn't a surprise. And they know the plays we have, but which one we're going to choose. So that obviously told them that we're going for two when we do score. And I could give them some details on it. And then at the two minute warning, I brought Demir over. 
and I explained to him, okay, when we get the touchdown, we go for two, here's the play. Just remember if it's man, if it's zone. And you, we talked that through a little bit and uh, Demir put a little spin onto it and Nick made a good throw. And uh, so we were, we were committed to that and everyone felt that way. So if you put it in his head, maybe you were the one that gassed him up on that 30 yard catch and run because Mooney was tearing through tacklers like he was uh, Marshawn Lynch. He was. He, that's that's uh, Moon can can. I'll tell you what, when he gets going, man, he gets rolling. And and uh, I thought for a second there he was even going to break that last one. And then you can see Daz Newsom jumping in and trying to push him out of the tackle. So that was uh, pretty neat to see from a, a wide receiver that's 175 pounds. Right. That was just flat out impressive. A lot of young guys put their hand up and made some plays. And interesting talking to Herbert after the game, too. He's, he, he used the term, we decided. He didn't necessarily mean last night. We decided as a group. And whether he's talking about young guys, whether he's talking about the rookie class and Justin and, and, and that group, uh, we decided we are gonna, we're going to finish this thing strong. Um, I, I thought that was... An impressive quote. It really caught my attention. We decided uh, because you know, a lot of guys they don't decide that they just want to finish up and go home. Yeah, no, that that's who that's who they are, uh, and we're seeing that. I think that's what's special is you got these young guys that are saying we're going to decide to finish it our way, and um, it's important to us that we finish strong. Uh, it just kind of shows to who who we all are as competitors, and now we got. To, a game coming up here against the Giants. Uh, and that's the only thing that matters right now is making sure we decide to empty our cup for this game and give it everything we got at home and uh, and do everything we can to get another win. What's it been like for you uh, right now? Because uh, that empty the cup thing is is obviously symbolic for you and significant, and you've always been about those types of things, you know, those sayings, those things that try to kind of set the tone for your week, your season and whatnot. So it's interesting, even at, at this late juncture in the season that these things are resonating with you. Well, for sure. And, and it's, there's different ways and they happen organically of how some of these messages can impact you, whether it's me with my, my sons or whether it's a player with a coach or a player to a player, you know, I, it's, I've made it well known about what I believe in and being you uh, for everybody as you go through good times and bad times is always stick to who you are. That's been real. And now this one here with empty in the cup is when whether things are good or things aren't good, uh, have no regrets, right? Leave it all out there. So that's a, that's a, I think it can be impactful to the players, to the coaches. And in times like this, when uh, you're not playing for the playoffs, uh, it can really bring things in perspective too. Cause that's another part of this too, Jeff. I think we all got to have a little perspective and be appreciative of where we're at and, and uh, what our job is. And that's to go out and win. Have you had your own challenges about staying in the present, you know, bouncing off that Giannis uh, quote from the uh, world championship for the Bucks that you hung on to early in the year? Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's only natural for all of us, uh, whether it's the start of the season and you're anxious to get to the middle of the season or it's the middle of the season, you're anxious to get to the end, whether it's the playoffs or, or whatever. And, but you have to, cons- you got to always just remind yourself that today is the only thing that's guaranteed. And our players do a good job of that. They focus in and in install meetings uh, when we're out here at the walkthroughs or at practice. That's the other part of this too, is they really, they, they, they practice like they play. And when you do that, it makes Sundays a lot easier. All right. Quick word on the giants. Yeah. Again, the team that we're getting started on watching tape, getting in late last night, but uh, you know, we, we understand that def- I know defensively they, they do some good things and, um, Coach Graham there on the defensive side of the ball will we'll mix coverages and different fronts and stunts. And obviously they, they uh, you know, having Daniel Jones on, on IR and you're looking at, you know, from or, or Glennon. Um, but at the same point in time, it doesn't matter. Whoever it is that comes in, we got to be prepared for and, uh, and pr- be prepared to do everything we can to win. All right, Matt, good luck with your prep. We'll talk to you later in the week. All right, Jeff. See you. Thanks. That's Bears head coach Matt Nagy. We'll have Sean Desai coming up next. Snap to Wilson, looking, stays in the pocket. Here comes Quinn, spins out of it, then he's got him, and down he goes. Robert Quinn there to make the sack of the quarterback, Russell Wilson, the 14th time he sacked him in his career. And that, for Robert Quinn, is number 17. 
Sunday's game against the New York Giants is brought to you by Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar, the zero sugar Bears fans deserve. Welcome back to the Bears Coaches Show. Joined by defensive coordinator Sean Desai. Sean, congratulations. Good to see you. Good to talk to you. Uh, how'd you like that one? Thanks, Jeff. Uh, uh, you know, it's always good to get a win. So it's, uh, it, was a, it was an exciting victory for us, and I'm glad the way the guys fought and uh, they kind of grinded all the way to the end. Uh, my sack call of Robert Quinn brought us in uh, out of the break here. Um, crash in the pocket on Russell Wilson. Uh, that was a high motor play, great angle. Uh, he is showing every single day and every single game this season just his value and what he's doing and his relentlessness. I think that's really the key word here. Would you agree uh, and how he's uh, trying to finish at the quarterback as, as much as possible? Yeah, I think that's that's the perfect word to use for his play demeanor. He's, he's playing at a high level uh, and – his motor just keeps going and, and you see it show up on tape constantly week in and week out and he's doing a great job with it. And so, you know, we're going to continue to ride his hot hand uh, for the rest of the season. We're only talking about him as a pass rusher because it's a significant stat number right now uh, at 17, uh, 11 and a half in the last seven games, seven straight games of the sack. I don't know if you're aware of all that. It's good math for fans, good math for, for bears fans, good math for Robert Quinn, but how do you think he's playing the run? Because I think, that may be the underrated story. Uh, do you feel he's playing the run at a level that you're happy with and that he's happy with? Yeah, I agree. I think I think it is an underrated story. I think I've said it a few times uh, with different media outlets that I think this is probably one of the best years that he's played the run uh, going back through his career. Not that he's been a bad run defender. I think he's really straining and mining to the techniques that Coach Huey uh, is asking of him and the defense is asking of him. And then it's showing up on tape. You know, he's getting TFLs. He's getting production. Uh, in a lot of different ways. And so, you know, I think that's been a great asset for him uh, and it's helped helped us, I know, uh, as a defense. And the significance of that is that he hasn't always been in this kind of system, a 3-4. So were there things in his technique that he brought to the table that you enhanced or you had to teach him a few new things in defending the run and even dropping back a few times? Yeah, I think it's a combination of both. I mean, you know, he's obviously a seasoned vet who's played a lot of football. So, we try to play to a lot of his strengths uh, and coach Chewy's done a great job of, uh, uh, and he's done, Robert's done a great job of understanding where those strengths can apply in this defense that we play right now uh, in the both run and the pass. And he's been highly effective for us, even as a dropper, you know, he had, a, uh, a, I think it was San Francisco. We had the big TFL on Debo Samuel in, in the open field. Uh, and, and so his relentless nature uh, shows up in all uh, facets of the game for us. And, and that's a, that's a really a good thing when you can have an outside linebacker play that way. He hasn't missed many. I know over the years, coaches have tabulated how many sacks maybe they should have had. Have you done that with him? And has he had many that he could have had? Uh, no, I haven't done it with him. Uh, right now, we're, we're just on the focus of the now and, and trying to keep getting better every day. And I'm sure there's a few out there. There's always going to be a few out there. Every season, there's some out there. And I'm sure Rob will tell you saying that he could have had a few. But, you know, that's part of this game. But the, the more you take the shots on goal, which he's getting, you know, whenever there's a pass attempt, he's able to go and, and convert into the pass rush. Uh, the more success you have and, and his relentless play and his ability to turn the edge and win one-on-ones is, is helping him. I know you're living in the now, but have you ever entertained the concept of if Khalil could have stayed healthy with this kind of Robert Quinn, what the two of them would do and, and what whose numbers would be going through the roof even? I mean, honestly, you think about it, it would really put the the offense in some real conflict. Yeah, I agree. I think, uh, and you saw it. You saw it when they were both uh, playing early on in the season together. Uh, the offense has had some hard times uh, with our pass rush, and Robert's taken on the torch, kind of taken on the ownership since Khalil's been absent of uh, of holding that standard up high. And so, I think with both of them, you saw it early in the season. They were both having career years. You know, uh, they're both they're both their sack percentages with the highest they've ever been in their careers. And so that's a testament to both of them. You know, they're, they're understanding what we're trying to do with them and they're executing at a high level. And so that's a credit to them. You know, we can't, uh, uh, like you said, we can't be in the business of right. uh, wishing and hoping, but um, the time that we did have both of them, we're proud of both of them. And, and I think the defense executed at a high level. And then obviously Khalil is a big loss for us and Robert's taking on the ownership of filling some of that void for us. Attending Sunday's game, be sure to stop by the Miller Lite Ultimate Tailgate located at the Field Museum. For food, games, music, and more, free to Bears fans of all ages, the Ultimate Tailgate opens at 10 a.m. through one hour post game with Bears defensive coordinator Sean Desai after the win 
Oh, yesterday uh, in Seattle, nicely done. A lot of different things we can focus on, but uh, let's talk uh, about the decisions you made in terms of personnel at various times and how you planned on stopping two potent wide receivers. And yeah, they had the 41 yarder, but that's it for DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. A very, very quiet day from those two gentlemen. Yeah, you know, we I think the back end understood what we needed to do to get uh, to get a handle on those guys. They run uh, a lot, a variety of routes, and a lot of them were obviously the deep balls or the deep overs, deep crosses across the middle of the field. And so we had to make sure that we were in great communication uh, with our back end, and then try to give our disguise a good look uh, to try to get Russell off those looks early. Uh, and you know, like you said, he had that one uh, into a post high coverage that you know we could have been better at with some of our techniques and fundamentals, and we will be better at those, but. That's part of, uh, you know, that's part of DK Metcalf. You know, he's going to catch a fade ball on you at some point. Uh, and we'll be better at those. But uh, I was proud of the way the DBs uh, challenged those guys all day. And I think uh, the Russian coverage worked well together to take them off those two guys. And you had a lot of variety back there again, uh, peeling off of what you did a week ago. Uh, how would you uh, characterize the play of the uh, the secondary in general? Yeah, you know, again, <laughs> I think guys are stepping up in their roles. You know, Thomas obviously gave up the big touchdown pass, but uh, – Again, like I said, that's a young corner who's, yeah. who's still uh, learning his way in this technique versus a big time receiver. And so what's your teaching fine. point there? What's your teaching point, Tim, on that one? Well, you know, you, you just want to make sure you, you're pressing. <laughs> that's right. You, you, you're pressing, so you got to understand how to pre play your press against a guy that's going to convert into a fade route, uh, especially a big, strong guy that's going to convert into a fade route uh, who uses as well at the catch point, uses his hands well at the catch point. So that's just part of the growth process for him. Uh, in this league, but uh, he did a good job challenging uh, the whole game. Artie Burns uh, had a, a couple of big uh, pass breakups. You know, uh, he almost came down with that one in the end zone in the two-minute drive, which would have been a great interception. And then uh, Kindle also challenged well, you know, at the point of attack. And we had some good tackles out of those guys. And then coming off the back end, you know, we, we uh, moved around Eddie Jackson a little bit. It was good to have him back, put him at the nickel and at the safety. So that was nice. Duke played a good game. And then Dion, uh, you know, overall had a good game also. So. And then you saw some reps of Marquee back at safety, you know, once T's Tabor went down. So, you know, like you said, it's, it's kind of just been that mentality where everybody's got to be ready to go, and th they're kind of expecting their number to be called. Six pass breakups uh, by the Bears defense, including Alec Ogletree and Bruce, Bruce Irvin also got in the mix as well. well. With Sean Desai here on the Bears Coaches Show on WBBM, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, what Roquan did yesterday. Uh, a time or two, I got the, I got the feeling he was spying uh, Russell a little bit too, and uh, again, just marauding all over the field. Yeah, you know, his, his <laughs> another word for he's another guy that's relentless. Yeah, you know, he kind of shows up all over the tape, uh, to the left, to the right, downfield on TFLs. You know, in the pass coverage, he's all over the tape, and so he's going to continue to do that for us. That's why I think he's one of the best linebackers in the league. Um, and, and he knows there are still some places that, that he can improve on. And that's the beauty of this, you know, because the guys are still looking to get better and the coaches are still coaching them hard to get better. Uh, and you're seeing it, you know, you're seeing some of the fruits of those labors show up week in and week out. And that's what we've always wanted to do is kind of focus on this process and, and try to make sure our guys are improving. You know, coming into the game, Seahawks had the lowest uh, time of possession in the league. And again, that it played out that way. Uh, just 25 minutes uh, headed into the game yesterday. Did uh, How much is that significant to you to just keep your defense fresh? The offense held the ball for over 38 minutes. Yeah, I think that's a credit to the offense of, like you said, holding the ball for a long time. It's always good for our guys to stay fresh and in, engage in the game. And then uh, you kind of get the opponent defense is reeling when they're taking those long drives. They're on the field for a long time. So I think our offense did a great job of doing that. And then uh, we, we did a, a pretty good job most of the time of trying to get them to third down and get them off the field. You know, we had a few three and outs and then a couple of long drives that we got to improve on. What did you think about the run defense? Uh, you know, I thought it was inconsistent yesterday. Uh, and, and really, the unfortunate part was I think we gave up uh, three explosive runs, uh, you know, that were over 20 or 30 yards, and that can't happen. You know, we, we got to tackle better on two of those runs where should have been 10 or 12-yard runs instead of 20 or 30-yard runs. Uh, and that makes a big difference, you know, when you look at that. Uh, but – I thought that they hit us on on a jet sweep a little bit on the perimeter. And then some of the run stats, uh, we had some penalties that were unfortunate that got added to those. So we got to be better, I think, at the point of attack, and we will be. Uh, <clears throat> and I think we just got to uh, – we play enough split safety to take care of those two guys that sometimes you get a little bit softer on the run. And that's that's part of the give and take that, that we got to be able to live with as coaches. 
Bears defensive coordinator Sean Desai, our guest here on the Bears Coaches Show. We'll step away. One more segment to go, and we'll take a little look at the New York Giants as well with Sean Desai here on uh, WBBM. Back on the Bears Coaches Show with Bears defensive coordinator Sean Desai. We'll take a look at the Giants in just a few moments. Uh, you, you've had to play a lot of guys, obviously. The team has, I think, uh, upwards of 76, 77 players, and there is trickle down uh, because of COVID and injuries and, and so forth. But you could look at that two ways, right? You could look at that as a negative because uh, we're not having the continuity. You're not starting the same <coughs> 11. You're not having the same nickel and dime packages. But ha have you enjoyed the variety? Have you used it to your advantage at the same time? Because uh, I think you're utilizing the talents of, of guys in, in ways that allow them to play fast. And they may not have been a starter, but they're getting a lot of snaps over the course of the last few weeks. And – they're, they just seem to be playing with a little more of aggressive demeanor. I, I'm, I guess I'm specifically talking about the back end because the front seven, we know what they, we know who those guys are. Yeah. Uh, you know, I Is think that fair. I, Is that a fair statement? Yeah, I think so. And I think uh, <clears throat> part of that comes with growth. You know, we had a lot of young guys back there uh, playing this year, especially when we had some turnover with some injuries, but uh, it is exciting. It's exciting to see these guys uh, understand uh, how to play the defense understand where to win in their leverages and then compete at the top of the routes, which they've been doing, you know, the last few weeks. And so that, that's that been nice to see. And it's been a variety of guys doing that. You know, so what that tells us is that they're taking the coaching. They're, they're understanding the points that obviously Deshae, uh, Mike Adams, Ronnell, and myself are giving in that DB room. Um, and so it's good to see them uh, see, see the positive fruits of their labor, you know, because over time, especially in a season like this where, you know, you're not winning as much as you want to, it can get frustrating. But I think the guys are buying into it and you're seeing it on tape. Thomas Graham went from zero media attention to a ton. He he, he did a lot of interviews last week, including with, with uh, Tom Thayer and myself, and he was a wonderful, wonderful perspective on where he's at and where his mind's at. Um, I think probably he'll look back at that first play, and that goes back into the category of you got to forget it because he came back and, and made plays. And I, I enjoy how he's tackling as well. He's going low and he's rapping. Uh, do you like the way he tackles? Is that how he tackled in college, or have you guys worked with him on that? Yeah, you know, I, th I think <clears throat> I do like the way he's, his uh, mindset is in tackling, um, and he is trying to go low and trying to wrap. Uh, he had a couple misses yesterday, which are going to be part of it, but the, the good thing about those is he's missing to his leverage. So he's understanding where his help is and then understanding that the pursuit is going to come. Uh, so if there is a place to miss, you got to miss to one side. You know, and we don't want to obviously miss tackles uh, at all. But I think he's he's understanding the overall leverage and the techniques of the defense uh, better and better each week. And it's been a process for him, like he said last week, you know, uh, coming off a year of not playing and everything. And and that that's part of it. You know, you, you got to take the time to do it and learn it. And it's a credit to him uh, to stay engaged and keep learning. Uh, and, and again, the fruits of his labor are showing up a little bit. You're getting Jalen back this week, coming off the COVID list. And I can't imagine uh, his patience was real good being out. Uh, for two games, knowing where his heart's at as well. Yeah, no, I agree. I, th I think he's probably chomping at the bit here uh, to get back in and get in the mix and kind of uh, be part of, of of all the things that we're doing right now. So I think uh, that's exciting for us to get a player like that back. Now it's time to look ahead, brought to you by Bet Rivers, the official sportsbook partner of the Bears, New York Giants. Come to Soldier Field for a noon start on Sunday. Uh, quarterback situation, not really sure what, where they'll go here, but uh, – what do you know about the Giants and uh, just this team played uh, the Bears early last season? Some of the same characters, um, they're struggling. And uh, what, what can you tell us? They've lost four in a row. Yeah, you know, I think uh, they're strong, but, you know, I think they're, uh, they have obviously changed coordinates. They got a little bit of shift in, in what they're trying to do offensively. Um, they've obviously got the ability to run the ball. They've got a couple good running backs that can do that. And so we got to make sure we're short up with our run defense. And, you know, we played Kenny Galladay a few times here. Uh, obviously, with his time at Detroit and everything, and, and he's still a good receiver, you know. So we got to make sure we, we take care of him. And then the, the tight ends are good, you know. Ingram's a good tight end, and so you know we're, we're going to have our hands full, and we got to make sure that we do our job with our preparation, and play with good run defense and techniques, and take care of the deep shots that they have because they do a lot of max protection shots. And so we got to make sure uh, our coverage holds up, and when we get a chance to rush, we got to be able to rush. All right, Sean. Good luck with your preparation. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. All right, that's going to wrap up tonight's show. For Keith Johnson, Dan Brilli, Jordan Treadup, and Jared Harburn, I'm Jeff Joniak. Thanks to Coach Nagy and Coach Desai. We'll have the Bears-Giants 9 a.m. pregame noon kickoff on Sunday at Soldier Field. This is News Radio 105.9 WBBM. Good night, everybody.